Hi everybody, Sandy here from Sandy Cooks. Today I'm going to make something I have never made before. Uh, and I'm not really using the recipe, I'm gonna go off the cuff here. Uh, I've seen this made a few times on TV and I decided, hey, I got some extra mashed potatoes. I'll try making potato croquettes uh, myself. So um, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do two different varieties. Uh, so we got mashed potatoes left over from Thanksgiving. So I'm gonna uh, fry up some bacon because we're gonna do bacon and cheese in both of them. So, um, and then we're, we're gonna compare these. The first one calls for, you know, your regular, uh, it calls for eggs and it calls for sour cream and some onions, salt, pepper, etc. mix it in, right? Uh, and uh, cheddar cheese to go with the bacon, right? You, you bread it, you fry it, good to go. The other one I'm gonna do is gonna use the, instead of using sour cream, I'm gonna use the garlic, the creamy garlic dressing that I make, which is mostly sour cream, a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of milk, but lots of, of uh, flavor, garlic and onion and stuff. And I think that that's really gonna impart an amazing flavor into these things. I imagine they're gonna be fairly heavy, so I'm not gonna make too many, maybe three or four for a person. Uh, and we'll see how this goes, and we'll we'll do a taste comparison against the two once they're uh, they're both made. So come along with me, and we'll give this a try, see how it turns out, and uh, yeah, that's it. Come along with me. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do here, it says to do this uh, with six slices of bacon so that's fine i'll take these out we're gonna it says we need to crumble them so i think what i'm gonna do is create lardons initially and then we can break those up even a little bit more or they'll get broken up more when we mix them into the potatoes i'm using a separate vinyl cutting mat here so i don't get raw pork all over my cutting board um, so I can if I need to cut anything else I can I don't think I actually need to cut anything else I think this is it and uh, I, I mentioned that I was gonna do a sour cream and then I was gonna use my creamy garlic dressing for the other one well I only have like a tablespoon of sour cream um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little trick I've used uh, at other times for making um, like double stuffed potatoes and that is using uh, using uh, cream cheese instead and a little touch of milk to thin it out so we'll do that instead and that'll be fine um, and for the, the the secondary ones I mentioned remember I, it, I said that I'm gonna do one with with the cheese mixed in the other one I'm gonna try and put a chunk of baby bell into the center of it so you get like a molten cheese thing in the middle. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna start it on high. I like this wooden spoon for doing bacon because I can push on it. I don't have to worry about scratching the pan. See, it just pushes things apart. Now, as the, as the bacon starts to cook here a little bit, it'll make it easier to break apart, so. I'm gonna wait for that, and we're gonna cook off some bacon. That's all I'm gonna do here. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, it's coming along here. I'm just trying to separate these as we go, and because we're gonna break them up anyway, they don't. I don't have to try and preserve hot their shape. So I'm just kind of poking at them to break them up, and it's working. So. I'm going to keep doing that. I'll bring you back when they are further along. You can see here, they're starting to crisp up a little bit. We want them way crispier than this. I've got a bowl here with some paper towel for when they're done so I can dump them into, drain them off, and then we'll have them for the potatoes. Ow, that's hot. I'm going to turn that down. All right, the recipe calls for a half pound of butter uh, in this. So I've got some salted butter here. Uh, you can use unsalted if you want. My wife actually bought the wrong kind. Um, I always use unsalted, but it's not bad. I'm going to just throw this in and start melting it. As anybody who's ever melted butter knows, uh, you need to do this on low 
because if you heat it up too quickly, the liquids that are in the butter, the non-fat liquids, will start to boil and will start exploding and popping everywhere. And we don't want that because it'll be messy and painful. So, uh, I have started melting our butter on my lowest setting that I have on my smallest burner. And as you can see, these lardons are getting pretty close here. Uh, I'm probably going to just go about another 30 seconds or so on here. And then I'm going to take these out. Okay, in about 30 seconds, I'm going to take these out. Hey, that pan's a little warm. Do this lefty so you guys can, uh, can see me actually do it. But there you go. You got all that grease in there that I probably shouldn't have done. I should have separated the bacon from the fat as I was doing that, but it's all right. It's going through the paper towel. I'll put it into another thing here so it, it keeps draining, but you know, we don't want bacon grease in there, so. Okay, so I'm gonna whip up these one batch at a time. Smells okay. There are leftovers, you do have to, you can't use them if they're too old. These are from Thanksgiving. I'm going to use, do two cups into each of these two recipes. There's only two of us eating tonight, so that should be plenty, if not way too much. Probably way too much. But if we don't need it, we don't need it. It'll be all right. And I warn you again, I'm winging this. I've never made this before. I'm not really following a recipe. Um, this is how I cook sometimes. It just is. All right, I'm going to take about half of the bacon. A little bit more. All right, half the bacon. It says to use half a cup of shredded cheese. I try to always keep shredded cheese in the house, so I happen to already have this. Oh my God, this tore really badly. Um, holy cow, okay, where is it? There's a little opening right there. <laughs> if I can get my fingers into. Ha, ha. Okay, Woo. All right, so it calls for half a cup, and I should do this lefty, half a cup of shredded cheese. Oh, let's even call it packed, because, you know, when is cheddar cheese ever a bad thing, right? All right, I'm getting rid of the uh, spoon I used for the lardons, because I actually want to use a fork to really mix this well. As I said, I've got, oh, get rid of the water, almost no sour cream left. Uh, like I said, I thought it was about a tablespoon. So that's what we've got. All right, and I've only got, well, I actually have more, more uh, cream cheese than this, but remember, this is thicker, right? And we're gonna thin this down. I love to use, cream cheese when I make double baked potatoes. I like cream cheese for that even more than sour cream because I can control how thick the potatoes are with cream cheese. Sour cream is more liquidy so it's harder to do that. That is not a half a cup though so I'm going to go, I have more of this so I'm going to take a little bit more to add here. I'm just going to use another couple of tablespoons here. I think that that'll be enough. Uh, let's see, I don't need that spoon anymore. I need the butter though. All right, I'm really kludging this recipe because it does call for two eggs. Uh, I've only got one. Uh, it is a jumbo as opposed to a large, so that's good because it's a lot bigger. I think what I'll do is I'll try and add half of this Maybe, 
into each one, into each batch. That's it. <laughs> Still need the butter. Now before I add the butter, I'm actually going to give this a mix because that butter is going to be hot and if it hits those eggs and they're all on top, it's just going to scramble them and we don't want that. So I'm just going to mix this up a little bit, break things up. I haven't added any salt in here yet. You guys are going to get mad at me because I'm going to taste this even though it's got raw eggs in it and you're not supposed to do that. But you got to taste things. Maybe I should have waited to put the eggs in until the very end. Oh well. Alright, but that will at least make it so that our butter won't scramble all the eggs as soon as it hits that. Alright, while I'm waiting for the butter, I'm going to go ahead and do the second batch. So again, whoops, I got rid of my spoons. I'm going to do it. No, no I didn't. <laughs> I got, I'm going to go with two cups of the mashed potatoes for this batch also. Alright. Come on. One. Two. And get the rest of our egg. Let's so get the rest of our bacon. And this time, I'm going to use some of my creamy garlic salad dressing instead. about the consistency of sour cream so it should work pretty darn well and I'm just gonna mix this up as well you see this is a little looser not sure how this is gonna work that is a lot looser so I think I'm gonna have to put this after I add the butter, especially. Why oh, didn't do the cheese? All right. You know what? I'm gonna put cheese in it, and I'm gonna do a center as a molten bob. That should help bring it together, the cheese. Why not? This is when cooking is fun, All right? We're just we're trying something. We're doing something that we think would be fun or interesting. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure how you go wrong with potatoes and cheese and bacon though. So there you go. And these things, the salad dressing may not taste significantly different. Although it does have the garlic and the uh, onions in there. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, that's it. Uh, still need the butter. Okay, I got the butter. I'm going to add about half into each. This is going to make it pretty darn liquidy, I think. That was rough amounts. Actually, this is pretty, that's going to bind together okay, I think. I think that one's okay. This one was even thicker, so it should also be okay. I may still want to add a touch of milk to it to thin it a little bit. Yeah. Just a little tiny bit. That was less than a third of a cup. Well, probably a quarter of a cup or less. 
and that is exactly what I needed because now it's just thinned out a little bit so I'll be able to make balls with it now I guess I could have done that before now let's taste it definitely need some salt pepper So important safety tip, this is way more than three or four, I think. This is gonna be like eight, maybe. So we're gonna to have too much. Okay. Oh, I didn't taste this one. Also need some salt. And pepper. hot enough actually we may be there 325 okay oil's good perfect all right so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some of this we're gonna make kind of ball with it I have to decide how I'm gonna shape these I think I'm gonna do them all with balls I use I like to use cornflake crumbs for breading Interesting. We'll see how this does. I'll just put one in for now. Okay, this was an absolute fail. That's that's what's left of my potato ball. <laughs> it's mush. Um, or I should say, that's what's left of my three potato balls. Because that's just some bacon. Uh, yeah, there's nothing less left in there. All right, so that didn't work. This happens. I need to rethink this, come up with another plan. I'm turning off my oil for now. I'm probably gonna freeze the mixture so it stays colder longer, but I'm gonna go to my computer and figure this out. All right, here's what I'm going with. And although I have not done enough research on the internet, but I have an idea anyway. I'm going to take these, where's my breading, there it is, if you can do fried ice cream, you can do fried potato balls, but it means that they've got to be frozen, or pretty darn close, so I'm going to make these, whoa! Sorry about that. I kicked the stand. I'm gonna make these like this. I'm gonna go put them downstairs in our freezer for half an hour or so. And then we'll give it a try. And hopefully they will stay together. Okay, 
Okay, so for this group, I'm gonna stuff them with white cheddar baby bells. I think half each. So that means I'll need four of these. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open these and break them in half. Okay, I got eight halves of cheese there. Gonna grab a little bit less potato than with the others. Gonna try and put that in the middle. <laughs> this isn't gonna work. There's no way that that's gonna work. Not a chance. Not unless I get more on there. All right, I have an idea. I have an idea on how to do this. Okay, that's the key. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna take about half of the mixture I need, put the, potato, the, the cheese there, about half more mixture I need, I do want to make sure I got any holes closed up because that'll be a direct line of oil to cheese if it gets through there, which we don't want. So, we got eight of each, like I said, way too much, but I'm going to take these down to our freezer in the basement for about half an hour or so, and then we will give it a try frying them. Alright, our oil has probably cooled off quite a bit, as you can see, so we got to heat that back up. It's been half an hour. The croquettes are in my freezer still. I'm going to wait till my oil is up to temperature, then I'm going to go get them. Uh, you can see over here what that first one, well, those first three turned into, right? Just nothing. They disintegrated. Hopefully, having them frozen will help. If you can fry ice cream that way, I figure you can fry potato that way, right? I just don't know if half an hour is long enough. So, we'll see. If this doesn't work, Alex and I are going to be looking for something else to eat for dinner. Okay, we are well on our way to 325, 350. So I'm going to go downstairs, get the croquets out of the freezer, and then we'll do these. All right, let's check. Okay, our oil is fine, or will be, by the time this is back in here. I don't know how these are going to turn out. I don't know if half an hour was enough. Try four at a time, maybe. And we'll see what happens. They're gonna need at least four minutes. We'll see if they're still solid in four minutes. Now, an interesting thing here. 
it has quieted down. I don't know if that means if it's because everything's been thrown off and there's nothing left in it, or if they've actually cooked out. Ooh, that looks promising. That looks promising. Fingers crossed. There's certainly. Oh, there's nothing there. Uh oh. Yeah, that that's not good again. That's not a croquet. That <laughs> that's not a croquet. Those aren't croquets. Okay. Well. All right. That was a fail. Just so you know, though, I did look back at the recipe, and it said that these are supposed to be baked, not fried. So I'm actually going to set my oven. I got them on a baking tray already, so why the heck not at least try it? So we'll see if we can resurrect this. Alright, just to capture this, I got the oven at 375 on convection. It's not heated up all the way yet, but I went ahead and I put the croquets in uh, the croquettes already. So we'll see what happens. Okay, they've been in the oven for about 25 minutes or so, but it hasn't been at temperature all that time. Oh, and look at that. They have mushed. Okay, so we're going to have something else for dinner. That didn't work. I hope you all enjoyed this video.